Alexander has this musicality, imagination, you know, power. To make music together with him is one of the great joys in my life. There are people who love his individuality and his interpretations, and there are people that can't stand him. Lexo is not the kind of person who was ever intended to live in a cage, and it's not surprising that he broke the bars. Lexo is like a gambler. He is playing a big game with his notes, and he wins. The voice of America and jazz music were strictly forbidden in the Soviet Union during the Cold War years. But for young Alexander Turadze and his family, the risk of listening was worth taking. Time for jazz. Willis Conover in Washington, D.C., with the Voice of America Jazz Hour. He was introducing to us all this magic which was coming out of, out of this tiny, tiny radio, which was jammed, of course, because we were not supposed to listen to that. But it was recorded in our minds, so it was something really magical. Ella Fitzgerald and Oscar Peterson and Count Basie and Billie Holiday, and you name it. It was a symbol of American freedom, something which we didn't have. It was such a powerful dream. Lexo, as his family called him, could not have imagined how this free-spirited American music would impact his musical style, his dramatic defection, and the generations of classical pianists he would someday teach. The St. Joseph River sweeps through the quiet Midwestern city of South Bend, Indiana. The area is typically known for its beloved football institutions and a large Amish community. But South Bend has another treasure, one that has received international attention, the Taradze Piano Studio at Indiana University South Bend. Alexander Taradze came to this nurturing community nearly 20 years ago with his dream of artistic freedom and a determination to create this unprecedented piano school. The role of Lexo in his studio is very, very important, possibly historical importance. Alexander, of course, is a father of this tradition. Uh, he continues with experience from Moscow, from Georgia, from playing all over the world, but he was stubborn enough to build this school and to excite and inspire so many young musicians. Taradze students have the rare advantage of learning from a teacher who maintains a robust concert life, one who performs with nearly every major orchestra and renowned conductor in the world. His human qualities, his inspirational qualities, are fantastic gifts for young people. It complements very well his piano career. Lexo's demanding concert schedule also creates opportunities for his students to travel and perform with these world-class artists. But for students to fully appreciate the Taradze way of performing, they must look to his grand romantic style and impressive repertoire of 20th century music. His recordings include Mizorsky, Ravel, Stravinsky, Scriabin, and his greatest triumph, the internationally acclaimed recording of all five Prokofiev concertos with conductor Valery Gergiev and the Kirov Orchestra. Prokofiev No. 2 has become Taradze's signature piece. Radzi is one of those pianists that believes that the artist 
can have a personality in music. And that gives him a freedom of imagination, a freedom of vision or insight into music. So he doesn't have to make a compromise about what his fingers do. What I was mainly attracted in jazz improvisation is a freedom of creativity and you can go, you know, as crazy as you wish. So how can I apply that to the music which is already written? I can't change note literally, but I can still make it swing my way. I love playing jazz. I feel that practically everything I play has this influence. How can you not employ that passion when you play Stravinsky's Capriccio, a piece which is uh, pretty handsomely influenced by jazz? It's not about really changing the notes. It's about spirit, about the energy, which comes with the new rhythms and the new passions. He's not playing Stravinsky the way Stravinsky played Stravinsky, but he is inhabiting this music, and he is invigorating this music, and he is animating this music. You can find pianists that the piano always sounds the same, doesn't matter what composer they play, and you can find those that sort of stretch the boundaries of it. He believes that the dimensions of sound and color need to be expanded as much as possible. He has so much to bring to music as a result of his own turbulently eventful life and his own turbulent personality, including, you know, the hardships that he's suffered and the tragedies that he's known uses everything that he has been and everything that he is when he sits down at the piano and plays it. He's always all there. Not so many years ago, Alexander Taradze would not have been allowed to walk along the Muntkivari River and the dramatic cliffs of Tbilisi. Lexo and his sister Nino carry bittersweet memories of their beloved childhood home, memories that still permeate his musical interpretations. It begins with the fact that his father was the leading composer in Georgia. His mother was a prominent movie actress, and their house was obviously a gathering place for people of consequence in the arts on a regular basis. Now, this is a house where I grew up, and after the death of my father, this commemorative plaque that my father, composer David Toradze, lived here, was installed. David Toradze, it was very, very interesting for me to hear what he thought about great conductors or great composers of the past. Especially, I remember he was so committed to the idea and to the spirit of supporting young people. That's what I remember taking very close to my heart. My mom, her movie career was formidable. Many important movies always very strong characters, and uh, she was always a star. 
Her first enormously popular movie was made in 1941. And from 41 till 2007, she symbolizes all these periods of hardship and tragedies and also happy times. Growing up immersed in the film world of his mother and the 20th century music of his father, Lexo's artistic style took root in contemporary ideals. But his father also taught in the conservatory and knew the importance of Lexo receiving a classical Russian training. This is a great hall of Tbilisi uh, Conservatory. I studied here before I moved to Moscow Conservatory. And it's important to know that most of them, Georgian part of our studio members, grew up in this conservatory. In 2006, 16 members of Martin Toradze Piano Studio were performing here throughout the whole week. So this hall has cumulative memory of many members of Piano Studio, besides that it has, of course, lots of memory for me, personally. Taradze's musical talent grew with inspiration from his very first teachers in Tbilisi, and later from his esteemed professors of the Moscow Conservatory. The primary thing I absorbed from these great musicians is a human warmth. You have to have this enormous fire coming towards your direction, and hugging you and saying, saying, and literally cooking you. And after that, some music probably might come alive. Taradze's dream of coming to America became a reality in 1977. That year, the Van Cliburn International Piano Competition was fierce and controversial. Lexo's main competitor was South African pianist Stephen de Groot. Second prize awarded by the Fuller Foundation goes to Mr. Alexander Toradze. It caused quite a stir. His playing was so individual that some of the judges simply wouldn't give him first place. On the other hand, it was so individual that some of the judges thought he was by far the biggest talent. For one thing, there are people who were aware of the competition, like Ernest Fleischmann, who was running the L.A. Phil, who immediately decided, I want this guy to play with my orchestra. Well, I was very, very lucky. I was among very few Soviet pianists who had the opportunity to tour in the United States and had my debut in Carnegie Hall. And uh, I mean, it was phenomenal. All these American things, I mean, museums and, and uh, concerts and jazz performances. And I met Oscar Peterson and Ella Fitzgerald and Ella called me on stage. I mean, dreams, wildest dreams, you usually don't have these ingredients. In 1979, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan and America broke off relations. Taradze's dreams were shattered as his American concerts were canceled. He was forced to return to the Moscow Conservatory to teach and to a limited concert life. His name was growing in Soviet Union and in a way it's very regrettable that he had to do it the way it happened with his defection. It was especially difficult for his father. 
I was supposed to play Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto all around Spain, except I was told that, you know, fortunately, Spaniards were not able to put pianos on the stages. I don't think that I was in the right state of mind. You cannot be in the right state of mind doing this kind of thing. Jumping a ship, it's a, it's a totally abnormal, disastrously painful situation, and painful for you, and you know that painful for your family. Then why do you do that? You do it... You do it for dream. Fortunately, Lexo's American friends, the Blake Byrne family, were touring Spain at the time. With their assistance, Lexo escaped his KGB guards to the American embassy in Madrid. The situation remained uncertain until he received a message from Ernest Fleischmann. So are you ready or are you willing to play tour with Los Angeles Philharmonic starting end of November? It was like somebody pushed the button and oxygen came my way. For the next 45 days, Taradze dodged the KGB by secretly living with a Spanish family. Under police protection, he escaped to America. Only then was he able to contact his family. October 83, I called home first time. But father was not home. So then I again called several days later and finally I talked to him. Next day he was called to KGB. November 4th was their whole day. Came back home, told uh, to my mom, to my sister, not to worry, everything is all right. What else he is going to say to them? Three days later, he was gone. He died. No one dared to tell Lexo of his father's mysterious death. The tragic news was withheld for three weeks until after his successful concerts at the Kennedy Center. Nobody told me the truth. Nobody. So since then, part of every day I dedicate to him, of course, musically. first year of my life in the United States, I did move to Scottsdale, Arizona, to hide from everything and everybody. Because I was paranoid, I was scared to death. My primary goal was, let me be yesterday's news or no news at all. That strategy proved to be impossible, as his bold concert career propelled him into the limelight. He could not be ignored. I was very taken by his exuberance. Alexa was my first soloist ever in this country. And we played the Ravel G major piano concerto. He treated it very beautifully, but very freely, which kind of taught me a lesson right away that, you know, when they make music with this guy, you better be alert. You know, sometimes he throws a curveball at me, but the point is to be able to catch it. Every concert he plays, he does it like it would be the last one in his life. And you can feel it from the very first note he touches. One reviewer vividly described Lexo's dramatic technique at Solonin's anniversary performance. Taradze was soloist with Salon at the Philharmonic debut 20 years ago, and he was a wild player then. He is 10 times wilder today. He didn't so much play Rachmaninoff as hunt Rachmaninoff, and the piano was his gunship. If a soloist could play jazz and a killer concerto exactly as written at the same time, he would play it the way Taradze did. Stomping, attacking, and drifting off dreamily into eternal space. 
With each concert triumph, Lexo became more secure in his new country and moved to New York. By 1988, Soviet-American relations had reopened and the U.S. government arranged for his mother to visit. It was an emotional reunion, the first since his defection. The importance of family was renewed for Lexo, and he soon married a young American pianist, Susan Blake. Their eight-year marriage resulted in his greatest pride, sons David and Alex. Across the country, Indiana University South Bend was developing a strategy to make a name for its music school. With the financial assistance of local supporters Lee and Geraldine Martin, the piano studio was created in what has now become the Ernestine Racklin School of the Arts. In 1991, Alexander Taradze was selected as their new Martin Endowed Piano Chair. His first challenge? Recruit the players. First was Sasha Corsantia, already winner of many competitions, but here he really flourished and won the Rubinstein competition and many others. Our first meeting in Tbilisi, Georgia, it was when he came for the first time after the defection. And of course the playing was phenomenal. That it, I was infected. I mean, he put a bug on me immediately. <laughs> when I came to South Bend, Sasha, Lexo, immediate picture, right at the arrival. Then bear hug, which is his speciality. And then the fifth or the seventh word probably he said was, Sasha, do you play Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto? Um, I go, no, I don't. Well, let's, why don't you learn it? <laughs> Just... <laughs> and I started learning this concerto that night. And then George and others came to me. It grew from there. Here, it was a perfect situation. All you had is piano and music, plus the monitoring eye of Lexo at that time. He would say, okay, you know, let's practice until 11 or midnight or whatever. You basically had no choice but to sit in the other room and practice along with him, because if you stopped earlier, he would say, do you think you need less practicing than I do? Lexo was one of the students of my father some 25, 30 years ago. So I know Lexo since I was four or five years old. This is something I was dreaming my whole life. It was very exciting years. Of course, nobody knew if it's gonna work or not. And uh, so that was the, the skeleton, the structure of the new Just Born to Raja Studio. And then, of course, many, many more generations of people came since. for each other endlessly. The time did not exist. Uh, it was just a phenomenal time, a wonderful, unforgettable time, because it was a real love for music. 
youth, feeling alive, feeling that every cell of yours is serving something wonderful. We ask each other to give ideas, sometimes hard to take, and sometimes you think that, you know, without that, oh my God, what, what am I going to do if I don't get that? Artists experienced very much the sense of loneliness. The people involved in the studio constantly communicate to each other. They share experience, they support each other which I believe is consequence of the personality of Lexo, is that this community is a big family. As a devoted father to his own two sons, Lexo understands the importance of creating a family bond for those students far away from home. In a way, he's become a godfather to them all. In our piano studio, we had six or seven marriages, out of which several of them were right here in this house. He basically spreads this enormous love around, and then you realize that you're not only a piano student, but you learn a lot in life as well. That helps you to become a better musician. Learning from Taradze is a 24-7 proposition. Lexo's house became the social hub of the studio, where dinners or parties often mix with artistic discussion and impromptu performances. Lexo really does promote in us to share, to be friends. We don't even have a desire and even thought to envy each other because we grow together. The studio family also plays hard together, tackling everything from having a winning soccer team of pianists to making their own wine. It's all about finding ways to transplant cultural roots in a new American home. When you are coming from different country, you know, the Americans, and especially in South Bend, it's so warm, they are helping as much as they can. Yet from the studio's beginning, Lexo knew a supportive community life was only the first step to the vision he had for his students. Once you have so many golden fingers, you know, what do you do with them? We started to play concerts in IOSB, but I felt it's not enough. We can do more. At that time, Robert Demery was a dean of school, and he was huge supporter of studio ideas, which I brought predominantly from Russia. And then Valery Gergiev, my great friend, when he had the Stravinsky and Prokofiev festival in St. Petersburg, he asked me, can we do some of the Stravinsky music? And I said, uh, yeah, we can do. How much you want? How much you can? I said, do you want all of it? He said, you can? I said, yes, we can. So we went and played entire Stravinsky piano music. So the idea of mono composer, one composer theme, was born. It was a sensational success. And the Columbia Artist Management uh, became interested. Lexo was able to fuel the interest and to boost this project. And uh, very few could do that. With creative support from their artistic advisor and general manager, the Terrazze Piano Studio developed marathon concerts for some of the greatest composers in classical music. They now receive prestigious invitations to travel worldwide and perform their unique one composer concerts. <laughs> Besides the concerts, we get to see those amazing places. And we do meet incredible musicians, you know, artists, people that we just don't see in everyday life.
every tour has its uniqueness and it's really unforgettable. The halls are always packed, which is, this is really amazing because concert may last seven, eight hours. So you see this incredible enthusiasm and uh, it makes you believe that you really do something important in your life. The idea to, to, to present a project involving not one, but five, six, seven, eight, and in one long marathon of music is a unique uh, experience. It's not possible to find anywhere else in the world this kind of idea. So in one day, you explore from the beginning till the end all the production written for piano by the, the biggest composers. It's incredible, it's a great idea, I think. The studio's marathons have attracted a lot of extremely favorable critical attention, and rightly so. The pianists are of superb quality, and you come away with totally new insights into the composer. My main goal for my students is them to have as much stage life as possible. I don't want them to treat their artistic life as a rehearsal. This is a real life. You are on a real stage. When you are preparing, you are, we are listening to each other and you are getting to know the comp composer so close. And it's not the same as to read it through by yourself or hear it, because yet you have so many pianists presenting the same composer from different angles. It is surprising that this method isn't more widely used around the world. It really does work. And I think they emerged out of this as much better musicians. What they are getting is confidence, exposure, inspiration and uh, camaraderie. And these are the kind of things that we usually don't get from school. need someone who does it all the time to teach you that. It's absolutely invaluable, the experience of a concert artist. 
And that's what he taught me, and that's what I try to teach my students. Toradzi Studio is the only group of students of one teacher, which is officially touring the world, getting professional engagements. It is built on a talent, it is built on a, on a true values of performing art, and that's why it is so successful. Indiana University South Bend and the Taradze Piano Studio decided to celebrate their continuing success with a family reunion of sorts. A music institute called Generations of Greatness. Most of the studio members are now winners of international piano competitions and have successful concert careers. Those who also teach in prestigious American universities are returning with their gifted students. This next generation and the studio's invited guests will have their turn in experiencing the Taradze way of teaching and performing. We are so fortunate to have him here. He certainly draws an audience and uh, draws a talent here. That if we didn't have the studio, we wouldn't have the level of students who perform here. I like to be contagious and I like to give viruses of passion to students. No, 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 I hate this. I hate this staccato. He is a taskmaster, but he does it in a way that makes you want to work for him. He's always joking, he's always fun and playful with his students. For this institute, three generations of pianists and invited guests will participate in master classes and a series of concerts based on a theme dear to Taradze's heart, American music. This American music will have a different sound because it's played by different personalities from different parts of the world. such a magical element. You make a choreography of the syncopations in different ways, and the great improvisers of American jazz do that. Gershwin had Russian-born parents, so there's something Russian in that music as well as something American. And this is brought to life by the pianist of the Taradza Piano Studio. But 
also we play some other composers' music who we think uh, have been touched by American music. Lexo taught me how to be an artist. I think it's important for my students to see where my teaching comes from and what they have become part of by studying with me, something a lot bigger than me. You could write a book about Lexo as a teacher, I believe. <laughs> There's so many things to talk about. He doesn't want you to make a copy of himself or tell you what exactly you have to do. You just have to be totally committed to how you are feeling at the moment and what's the response that you're getting from the audience. audience wants to be passionate. How you want them to be burning if you are not burning? So you have to put yourself on fire first. They know what is the real fire and what is the fake one. What Lexo gave me was uh, about timing and colors. He really showed me how to stretch timing within the music almost to its absolute limit. You're on the verge of falling apart, um, but it's still together. And it, it just made things much more dramatic. And a lot of it has to do with exaggeration, but it's not where it's just meaningless. Look, you start with exaggerating stoppages and exaggerating everything actually and then gradually like a sculptor taking out so you know you have if you have a this size of stone you cannot make this size of sculpture sculpture of it but you have this size of stone you can make this size of sculpture if you want to but gradually dilute it and make it simpler and simpler and simpler but idea will remain please Lexo inherited a composer-like thinking. That's a major factor in, uh, in Lexo's teaching. He is kind of leading you to a point where you become a composer yourself and you uh, rediscover this music. Better, better, better. Put, you know, this... something annoying, something you know, like a mosquito, but stop. But this is not a mosquito, this is a really mean son of a gun, you know. Creating narrative images for each composition is critical yeah. to Lexo's teaching philosophy as well as his own interpretive style. I think the most exceptional example of that that I know is the Prokofiev Second Piano Concerto.
But I don't think Prokofiev interpreted the concerto the way Lexo does. For Lexo, the whole concerto is a requiem for a, a friend of Prokofiev's who had died shortly before the concerto was written. of second piano concerto is colossal. Here it's like entire universe is crying with Robofik because his personal loss became loss of entire universe. few musicians who I performed with so many times. Maybe Lexo will take position of absolute leader. It's a lot to do with repertoire. Shared passion and shared love for Stravinsky, Prokofiev. through five Prokofiev piano concerti. It was an unbelievable experience. And we recorded all these concerti. The way he could concentrate on this project and the way he was going deeper and stronger Also, not without pain, not without doubt. He has this quality to question every bar, every idea of composer. He wants to find some maybe very unusual image, in which will be, for most people, maybe strange. But it helps him to be so well equipped and to be so full of these intentions, so full of these images.
Lex is, is a very important figure in the world of music today because he is not a conformist and we mustn't lose musicians like him. If that happens, we lose something incredibly valuable in our musical tradition. Alexander Taradze has indeed found his dream of artistic freedom on the world's concert stage. And with the unique school of pianists from many different nationalities who have become family. The whole reunion concept would be very dear to my father's heart because he loved his students. And that's probably where I learned to love mine. Lexo and his students are equally cherished by the South Bend community, who works hard to keep this musical treasure in their midst. They continue to support the studio financially and emotionally, with everything from donating Steinway pianos to helping the next generation of students adjust to a new country. Lexo brings uh, vitality um, and excitement to music, and he brings music to the community. He's an intense pianist, and he's an intense person. He's a, a, a man who reaches out and sort of bear hugs the community. It's a jewel for us, it's a treasure, and it's a lot of fun. It was such a powerful dream that somewhere, somehow, great people are making this kind of spontaneous, phenomenal music. That country must be something unbelievable. And it is. Sounds of the 70s. Sunnuntai iltana teemalla. Yle Livessä Coldplay. Sunnuntai iltana teemalla. Five hundred years after Leonardo da Vinci first described the contact lens, they have become a viable replacement for glasses. In the grit and grime of London's streets, 
the eye picks up particles from the air. The eye's natural response is to blink and use tears to flush away the debris. But this constant bombardment will leave some grime stuck to the lens. After a day spent on the streets of London, the eyes become clogged and tired. Soft lenses can absorb chemicals from the environment. This build-up can eventually make the lenses uncomfortable and interfere with vision. Fortunately, soft lenses are easily removable. Contact lenses rest on the cornea, the outer surface of the eye. Magnified 500 times, we can see that it's only 70 thousandths of a millimeter thick, thin enough for our eyelids to glide over easily as we blink. Contact lenses correct vision by helping focus light accurately onto the retina at the back of the eye. As we move inside the lens to the surface in contact with the eye, we see a buildup of protein and lipid deposits. These will eventually reduce the lens's performance. Soft lenses are easily washed in a saline solution. Once cleaned, they can be replaced. As we move around to the front of the lens, we see how it has been shaped to fit the cornea. Move in closer and we see grease deposits. A fingerprint has been left on the surface. In amongst the grease, we find soot transferred from the finger back onto the lens. Unlike glasses, modern lenses are disposable, discarded daily. For this rider, tomorrow will bring better vision, at least temporarily. Kesäkinossa kaikki tahtovat rakastaa. Lauantai-iltana teemalla. Och att han ska peka på fem specifika problem. Om olika är inför lagen är det första. Finns det fyra kvar? Frågan är vilka? Tällar vi om en fysisk, kall person eller en psykofekisk?